Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Joining me after a brief hiatus is Professor R. Vaidyanathan, also fondly called as Professor R. V. As we take a look at India's elections, both the national as well as Tamil Nadu polls, from a conservative's viewpoint. And uh, Professor R. V. clearly calls himself a conservative, and we may agree or we may not agree. Disagree, uh, we may not agree with his viewpoint. But it is his viewpoint. Let's welcome Professor R. V. Professor R. V. Namaskar and welcome to P. Guru's channel, sir. Namaskaram, Vanakam, Namaste. It's always a pleasure to address the P. Guru audience. As I always mention, they are very perceptive and give very interesting comments. I thank uh, IR for providing this opportunity. I also thank Sharma, who is uh, Sachin, who is. Uh, in the background, but uh, practically is the one who does all the technical as well as uh, programming help and other thing. For him also my sincere uh, thanks. Now, <clears throat> at the beginning itself, there is a disclaimer. There is a difference between wish and assessment or forecast. So, what I am going to share with you is my concerns and uh, about assessment and not wish. Straight away, if you ask me, the wish will be uh, that the NDA group gets 400 and uh, BJP alone get 350. And that is the wish. But that's not what I am going to talk about. Because in India, a lot of people confuse the wish with the estimate or forecast. First point I want to stress on this. And there is a lot of uh, enthusiasm. Many people are talking in terms of 400, some people 450 and you know, any number what comes to your mind you can say and uh, some are called strategic, some are called expert, some are called psychologist and all type of uh, people are jumping into this. It's the season for uh, uh, number crunches and uh, some don't have any numbers at all but they crunch still, doesn't matter. So we will now just you know you look at what happened in 2019, that was a very major uh, landmark. The previous uh, Lok Sabha election, the NDA, you know, we will use uh, NDA instead of BJP alone, got uh, 26 out of 26 in Gujarat, 100%. 25 out of 25 in Rajasthan, 100%. 28 out of 29, only one seat went away. Chindwara, if I recollect correctly, in Madhya Pradesh. Yeah, it's Kamal Nath's son, yes. And uh, Chhattisgarh, 9 out of 11. Just two they did not get. And uh, in Maharatra, Maharatra, that time the combination was different. It is not the current uh, combination. In the sense that, uh, you know, uh, the Thakare that uh, Shusena got split and uh, our friend uh, Shinde has become the chief minister. Man with the kumkum in between his eyebrows always. He is the CM of the state now. And they have formed a grouping with uh, the breakaway group of Sharad Pawar and uh, the BJP. On the other side we have the original Sharad Pawar group and uh, Congress and what is called UBT, they call it. It looks like some railway station name, but it is not. It is Udav Thakare's uh, original thing. So they have, they have already, they called themselves uh, Maharashtra Alliance. So they have announced also their candidature thing. The other side has not yet announced. So in this uh, uh, combination of Sharad Pawar, I think, will get 10 and the UBT will get some 21 or something. And the Congress will get some 17 or something. It's one of the large states actually, Maharashtra. And the last time, the 23 out of 48, we keep that number in the back of our mind. In Bihar, again, the combinations have changed now. Uh, last time, BJP got 17 out of 40. Interestingly, Bihar has got only 40, while as Maharashtra has got 48. And uh, in West Bengal, 
not much change has taken place in terms of alliances. Uh, BJP got alone, got 18 out of 42. In UP, 71 out of 80. The, you know, BJP and uh, some smaller party like Apna Dal and other. Karnataka, very interesting in South. Last time, 26 out of 28. Just uh, two seats only, they did not uh, win. So this is of course Kerala 0, Tamil Nadu 0 and uh, this is the picture and the northeast significant number of seats, not much scope for improvement and the others are smaller states like your Uttarakhand and uh, Haryana, Haryana, Punjab. Now 303 was the number for BJP. If it has to reach that number, it has to keep what I said, what I was mentioning to you, plus it has to add something in order to reach 350. If I am correct in my assessment, they are contesting something like 450 all over the country. Congress is contesting something like uh, nearing 400 all over the country. And uh, BJP is contesting 450, the remaining roughly 100 out of 543 is by what you may loosely call other uh, alliance parties of BJP. Some which are antagonistic alliance, some which are uh, non-antagonistic like BJD in uh, Odisha. In the sense you can expect BJD to come to BJP's rescue in case it is required later. Now the point is, would they be able to maintain this 100% uh, score? in states like Gujarat, Rajasthan and MP nearly 100% and uh, also and UP it's not 100% but it is uh, 90% and improve its position in other, other states been essentially south that we have to keep in the back of the mind and uh, Maharashtra and Bihar given the nature of the shift in alliances it would be very difficult for us to say anything except that if they can sustain their past record that itself will help them in this 303. Yes, you want to say something I hear? Yes, sir. Sir, just a small correction. I think 2019, the BJP got 60 seats in Uttar Pradesh, not 71. That 71 number was in 2014. In 2000, 2019, what happened was Samajwadi Party and Bhujan Samaj Party uh, teamed together to put a united front against uh, BJP. They got 62 seats, I think. I don't know. I will check it. Any of this is what I downloaded from the election commission thing. Mm -hmm. I'll recheck it, right? Yeah. Anyhow, if it is uh, 60, then uh, what I am going to suggest is, where is it going to get that, assuming that they keep all this uh, earlier? Yeah. Where are they going to get it from? Essentially from southern states. One. Second is, it's not very easy to maintain the earlier balance according to me. There will always be some, for instance in Karnataka, there is a significant amount of, uh, you know, internal dissension and uh, even a very, Dairappa, one of the uh, great uh, literature person in Karnataka, who can be considered as not, he is not a member of BJP or anything, but he is a sympathizer for the, uh, you know, uh, Sangha Kars, Kars and other thing. He himself says that uh, BJP will lose uh, two to four seats over and above what uh, it got last time. And there are, for instance, there is another, not a very mass leader, but a leader, Iswarappa. He is uh, in a revolting mood and they have given ticket to Shetter in uh, uh, North, uh, in, the, in the belt, uh, Belham, uh, Ubli, Darwar belt and the party people are in a significant amount of dissension. They could contain to some extent this uh, Mandya uh, issue by absorbing the wife of uh, the earlier Silimatya. Yeah. So, but uh, there is again, you know, there are, for instance, uh, they have not given ticket to the Mysore MP, presumably because he is one of them who, Sima, who is one of them who gave the uh, 
passes for people who created trouble in parliament anyhow and then our ananta kumar agade the rebel without a pass one can say <laughs> he said uh, he would uh, have a uh, we have to have a new constitution nothing different about it constitution has been amended 100 times so there is uh, but anyhow he has also not been given ticket and they have inducted into the party again that old bellari uh, king our redigaru who is very well known for uh, his uh, mining tactics as well as uh, he is one of the very few persons he, he believe me he redrew the map between karnataka and andhra pradesh actually he should be sent to border you know with uh, this uh, loc or lap in order to create the map he redrew the map and proved that he didn't do any mischief in the karnataka side of the <laughs> what one can call anyhow uh, humor apart reinducting him may also give some signal and there is uh, you know the usual type of uh, dissidency in uh, bangalore north and the various other places point i want to stress is 26 is not going to be easy for bjp in karnataka out of 28 so in case in all the other states put together what we were adding they lose say let's say 10 to 15 seats at least they are not going to keep intact the same thing and uh, in karnataka another say 8 to 10 seats which comes to 15 plus at the max 25 303 minus 25 is already giving you 278 mm. so it's not a very uh, comfortable type of a uh, number so we have to be very realistic in and that has to be compensated in tamil nadu and kerala kerala by all accounts the vote percentage is always good for bjp but not the number of seats so they may get one or two then uh, tamil nadu also how much to expect this is a very very important thing. so in all this uh, analysis tamil nadu becomes a very very uh, critical variable in terms of addition of course enthusi- bjp enthusiasts say 10 to 12 seats we will get another thing. that will be a very very high number in terms of percentage of uh, votes it could be 10 to uh, 15% mean it will be a very good percentage if you ask me actually because they are standing alone now and uh, earlier they did once 2014 so I remember that time they co- collected something like uh, 10% or 8% or something. Anyhow, this time they are uh, really alone, along with some alliance partners and other things. Alone, I mean, in terms of opposing both the uh, Dravidian parties, openly, in terms of not, uh, you know, sort of a friendly fight or anything like that. If they take 10 to 12, it will be Adhamam. If they take 15% vote share, i would say it is uh, madhyamam they collect something like 20% it will be uttamam that's going to be a very very tall order even if they collect uh, 15% how much of it will be converted into number of seats is another issue you see you may get even uh, 20% but you may get zero seats it depends how much it is spread in a and um, almost all constituencies it's a three cornered fight and uh, there is a you know rumor or there is a talk that the other two dravidian parties may come into understanding tacit understanding of you know not uh, uh, you know giving importance to one or the other in some constituencies and other be that as it may this is a big fight for the simple reason first time bjp has explicitly Uh, questioned the uh, Dravidian ideology itself. It's not just a political fight like in the past. In the earlier times also, BJP used to fight uh, against ADMK or DMK, but that used to be mostly in terms of politics. But now, it is more than politics. The BJP chief has openly told about uprooting the Dravidian culture from the Tamil soil. For instance, as an example, he mentioned about uh, 
shifting the statue of E.V. Ramsamy Nayakar in front of Sri Rangam temple to some other location. So this is not something like the old, you know, uh, DMK is not good, DMK is like this and the ADMK, no. It's something much more serious. If you look back in history, in 1920s, uh, there were three ideologies which uh, seeped into the Indian situation. The first one is uh, the communism. 1920, of course, communism was uh, known before also, but within India, again, 20 or 25 CPM and CPM as usual, they don't agree on that. <laughs> CPM says 20, 20. CPI says, uh, CPM says 25, CPI says 20. Uh, you know, depending upon uh, whether you would like to <coughs> agree a meeting which took place near Moscow uh, to be part of the beginning of the communism in India. Anyway, it doesn't matter. In the 20s, that has declined significantly and uh, that had a huge uh, uh, rise in the 60s and 70s. And it culminated in, uh, they declared, you know, uh, what, they, what one can call, uh, giving the direction to the government in 2004 to 2009. And in those days, it used to be told, uh, the government of India is run from Alim Street and Papalapuram. These are the two places. And uh, Karnanadi announced the uh, cabinet ministers and portfolio from his home. It was not done by Manmohan Singh, actually. <laughs> Anyhow, but that uh, decline started for communists and after so much uh, number of years, unfortunately, they lost in Tripura, they lost in Bengal. By all indication, they might lose also in Kerala. So that uh, 1920 introduced ideology is uh, prevalent in some parts of Kerala and of course in uh, Daba outside uh, JNU called Ganga Daba. There you go and find in the Saturday, Sunday morning, a lot of these bearded students will sit and discuss about uh, uh, Lenin, Stalin, Castro and all that uh, historical figures. Have a cup of coffee and nowadays the Daba fellow, I am told, is very serious. <laughs> he has no credit. He wants only <laughs> cash or uh, uh, GPA. Anyhow, the other one is uh, Justice Party. 1920 again, four of them, and uh, they supported the Jallianwala Bag massacre. If you believe me, 1919 massacre was supported by uh, Dr. Nair and uh, the Tagaraya Chetty and a couple of other leaders of Justice Party. And they were, they also went to UK, they published their article in uh, UK papers because the Indian papers were very reluctant to publish anything of that sort. Anyhow, and that became uh, later into the DK uh, and then it became DMK and you know, it's all. So the culmination of that is uh, in today's uh, DMK and that uh, other one, ADMK. And uh, that uh, 1928. And the third one is 1925 on Vijay Day, which was started by Agdevar in terms of this uh, Hindutva, RSS. It's a very interesting thing that uh, 100 years before, three major ideologies got into our system and all of them are having their own uh, type of a uh, nemesis, I would say. So there is a big uh, contra or conflict between this uh, Dravidian ideology and that of the Heidevar in today, openly in Tamil Nadu, is the last uh, bastion. And so DMK is uh, extremely concerned. There is a popular proverb you will know, power corrupts and uh, infinite power corrupts infinitely. And uh, more important is the third one is uh, imminent loss of power corrupts infinitely. So the DMK is extremely worried because losing this poll you know, suppose they get something like 25 seats or something, it's going to be a devastating impact on their future. And uh, because uh, Anamale has openly declared about not a political fight, but much more than uprooting the whole idea of this uh, Dravidian ideology. So that is the, so they will, according to me, 
between uh, uh, today and the poll day, they will try many things. They may try to postpone the Coimbatore poll, if possible, by some uh, tricks and methods and already a case has been registered against Anamalai and other. Or they may use what is called their Thirumangalam formula, age-old formula of uh, M.K. Aragiri, near uh, Madurai, he introduced that formula. Distribution of cash, that's all. And uh, so they may literally, you know, liberally distribute, sometime cash, sometime in terms of some gold ornament. Last time <laughs> there was a complaint that it was plated gold and not real gold, anyhow. So this type of uh, tricks they may adopt in order to uh, get the thing. The third could be to, you know, make their own candidate uh, sort of withdraw and uh, support the ADMK, Sanjay Ramachandran. He is very popular also there. He is thoroughly known. He belongs to the Naidu community. So all that uh, in uh, as an exchange for central Chennai, where Maran seems to be having some difficulties. And Maran, whatever said and done, his family, Kanimuri is family. Family is not going to be given up under any circumstance. So, between today and the poll day, you can expect a significant amount of uh, impact in this particular. Why Coimbatore? Because there the head of the BJP is standing. And uh, if somehow they can get him defeated, Nothing like that. You know, that will be a huge morale booster for both the DMK and ADMK. So, their, you know, single-minded uh, focus is on Kwanathu. How to uh, get him defeated. And uh, he is uh, somehow confident. More important is, of course, the heat wave uh, all over the country. The northern part of the country also. Why I am mentioning that is, that would decide about the uh, percentage of polling. In normal time itself, polling percentage is not very impressive in India, particularly in urban areas. For instance, Bangalore doesn't cross 50%. One of the highly illiterate, highly IT, this, that and other thing. And actually the poorer segment, the illiterate segment, they are much more conscious. They go and vote. As I always say, for instance, during emergent, post-emergency, it is the so-called illiterate and poorer segment of the north which voted out Indira Gandhi and not uh, the south gave solid uh, number of seats to Indira Gandhi that time. Patna to Patan court she got zero seats. So one is the heat and uh, how many will. Second is I am concerned about complacency. Already many people known to me are telling anyhow BJP is going to win. That's a very very dangerous uh, type of a uh, attitude. In that sense, if it uh, leads to absence from the polling booth. So, this is what happened in 2004. Some of you may remember. It was told as uh, everything is gold and uh, we are all on a winning streak and other things. So, 24 is a very, very critical uh, poll. To the extent, uh, as usual, many of the leaders of uh, India are propagating, this will be the last poll if uh, Modi wins. <laughs> this is what they told in 2019 also. Anyhow, they are uh, very desperate. And uh, all these family parties, dynasty as it is called. NST is not uh, one uh, uh, son of a leader become minister or something. That's not dynasty. Dynasty is handing over the party itself to your progeny. Like Lalu handed it to his son, Mulayam handed it to his son, uh, Sheikh Abdullah handed it to his son, who in turn handed it to his own further son. Stalin uh, handing, wanting to handing it over to his son, who got, his, got it from the father. Of course, it's a unique situation where uh, the father of Stalin was not the founder of uh, DMK. He was not even one of the founders, he hijacked the party and then handing it over to his son. That's the dynasty. So, if complacency, heat and various other factors, and there is internal uh, dissension, I hope BJP and NDA is able to, for instance, Baroda, they are 
I had a lot of hesitancy in declaring their candidate. Who is whoever was declared originally was not enthusiastic in a state. And Gujarat, uh, there is some amount of what you may loosely call uh, dissensions. So also in Madhya Pradesh, so also in uh, Chhattisgarh. So one has to be cautious. And uh, my own uh, humble submission will be 300 must be reached by BJP alone, not in you know in uh, combination with other parties. Otherwise, it has to be a uh, coalition government at the center with uh, say BJD, with, uh, with TDP, and uh, some other smaller parties here and there. And uh, coalition governments not very bad or anything. But it has its own, uh, you know, what were dynamics and other. More important is 400. <laughs> In the recent time, two times 400 was crossed. One was by Indira Gandhi. She crossed 400 and her government didn't last for the full term. And uh, then later it was uh, Rajiv Gandhi time. It crossed 400. That also did not uh, last the full term. <laughs> the point is, this 400 is a panauti. It's a, it has to be drifty is there. If you cross 400, it's not very easy to run it for the full term. That, that's what the two past experiences suggest. This is what we call in economics or finance, winner's curse. If you do extremely well, then the tendency will be for a large number of people to you know, look for some greater share of the, uh, you know, uh, greater share of the biryani or greater share of the uh, the dish and that create its own internal uh, dissensions. This is another issue. If it is less than 275 and it is going to be a very very complex situation and there could be some uh, dissidents within the BJP also but uh, I only hope that uh, of course, as I told, my wish is BJP should cross 350. But uh, the situation is not very. Uh, most uh, important thing to watch is Tamil Nadu, Bihar, and Maharashtra. Maharashtra and Bihar, I take it as they would be able to do the similar last time. So, Tamil Nadu is going to be an important factor. Even if they get uh, two seats or three seats, that is going to be a very uh, major thing actually because uh, it will be a big boost for the party for 2026. So, one has to be alert between today and uh, the Friday, which is the next Friday, which is the voting day for Tamil Nadu. Then, of course, a lot of voting days are there in the month of April, May till June 1st, then June 4th, all the cat will be let out of the bag. So we can wait for that. That is what is, uh, I thought I will mention in this uh, talk. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you so much, uh, Professor RB. Um, one uh, thing that I think BJP realizes is what you said, that uh, complacency as well as uh, fatigue, voter fatigue, voting to the same party again and again. They want to give another party a chance or like you said, the pie is getting reduced. Indications are that the pie has gotten reduced because of Jan Dhan Yojana and many things where the middleman is practically eliminated. Whether it is BJP or Congress, it doesn't matter. There is a middleman and that middleman wants to get his cut. That is not happening. Uh, Professor Arvi, uh, in Tamil Nadu, let's just take Tamil Nadu because it's become a very critical state now. Um, we've been very candid about our assessment of what BJP uh, can and cannot do. BJP had a certain goal in mind that this, will, this is the number of seats that we will get. However, the groundswell of anti-DMK sentiment and pro-Modi sentiment, both are there. <coughs> now... What people are saying is, oh, BJP, if they had a better ground game, like better booth management, more reliable people, they could get even more than what they originally thought. 
So this is one of those things where you don't know, you go conservative and suddenly you realize that, uh, oh, we could have been better. Maybe BJP is playing for 2026 and not really 2024. I could be wrong, uh, Professor Harvey. My question to you, sir, is this is one thing. Second thing is I'm already hearing, fearing uh, raids on money houses, uh, the Dravida parties are already starting to, including uh, Congress, distribute cash already. Uh, and it's being done in installments. See, Thirumangalam formula was one-time payment. This is a new thing, uh, Professor Arvi. Two ways they are paying. Installments, the other one is give some money and then give a grocery account for one month. Whatever you buy in grocery store is free. So with this kind of creative stuff going on, how much of an impact will that have on the use, uh, on the voter? Creative is nothing new for us, actually. I would tell you, when Lale Adav had a no-confidence motion in the 80s, he wanted to buy MLAs, but he was not very confident. How many, you know what he did? He had the currency notes. He cut them into half, bundled. The one half he gave to the candidate, the other half with the numbers and, you know, which are supposed to be the important half, he kept it with him. He told he will observe your voting and then he will give you the uh, other half. It will match, of course, it has to. So what I want to say is this, uh, you know, this distribution of uh, money or, you know, uh, cooker or, you know, all these things, the provisions and uh, it will have definitely a you know impact because immediate gain is much more critical than any you know future stake no, no, no. or you know that type of thing current consumption is always preferred and already they are claiming that they are giving 1000 rupees per lady and uh, and maybe 40 50% at least has got it and free bus uh, uh, travel facility for the girls so this uh, and today, Raji Rahul has announced to one lakh per person in every household, poor household in India. Even assuming 10 crore households are poor, 10 lakh crore has to be generated to give it. And uh, a lot of false uh, you know, propaganda is also done. For instance, it is told that for every one rupee, we get only 29 paise back, which is utterly uh, wrong and false. But what happened is in this, uh, you repeat a lie some hundred times, it becomes a truth. Where are people going to find uh, what is called the actual truth? Perception is much more uh, important than uh, other thing. So they will uh, definitely uh, give uh, in installment or uh, what you said in terms of uh, innovative ways of uh, filling up the pocket. How much that will have an impact on the people is very, very, and uh, my hunch is it will have an impact. Large number, because we are, now what has happened in Tamil Nadu is so they are used to, you know, uh, getting uh, money for votes and other things. They are, you know, they are so much used for even attending meeting, 200 rupees uh, become a minimum thing. And uh, plus your food and some quarter. This, uh, this is the... This scheme has become standardized now. So it's a very, very uh, difficult thing, actually, I would say, in order to you know, overcome this. Uh, see, 70 years they have been, by and large, more or less, 60, 65 years, they are ruling the state. And uh, Congress is completely got wiped out. And it is more or less merged with the DMK party today. It is not having its own independent uh, uh, position post-1967. So the situation is not very uh, great or anything there. Unless there is a uh, huge wave which uh, you know comes and uh, which thrashes all this type of you know uh, booth and uh, campaign and these small small things. Just uh, I remember in Dindukal when MGR split the party, he put a candidate and he went from Chennai to Madurai by train. <laughs> evening, he got into the train at Egmoor. Believe me, next day evening only he could reach Madurai. It was stopped in so many places 
it created chaos and havoc in the railway system. They have to request him not to travel by train anymore. <laughs> and that type of a normally it would have reached in the early morning, right? But it didn't reach. That was a sort of a I would say tsunami type of a wave. And uh, are we going to see something like that? Is uh, we have to wait and see. But uh, my own uh, hunch and assessment is uh, Tamil people are so much used to uh, getting this uh, funds, money, and uh, whatever you call it, revenue and various other type provisions and this and that. It has become a you know norm or natural type of thing. Nobody uh, raises a uh, I you know eyebrow or anything about that. So that's Thank you, something. Sir. Yeah, we have a lot of questions now. Uh, if you don't mind, we'll take a few, sir. Yeah. First question, please. Vijay Kumar Srivastava wants to know, sir, why central government and investigative agencies are not taking action on DMK corrupt politicians? Why hesitation? Namaskar. Good question, Srivastava. Last 10 years, you observe, not a single fellow has been put inside jail. This is something very, very interesting and important. Don't go for Lal Lalu Yadav was pun you know, punished for some other misdeed because of one uh, Roy who made a complaint on this fodder scam. It is much uh, before this. Similarly, Jayalalitha's punishment also not uh, related to this. Otherwise, nobody has been. For instance, this uh, 2G, Gopalakrishnan, I think you may know, many of you would have he is a senior journalist who has been following it up like anything. Even in Pee Guru, he has given... Go, Gopi Krishnan. Gopi Krishnan. Gopi Krishnan. He has given talk in Pee Gurus also. He has, um, you know, it took such a long, 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 long time, actually. And so many other scams. Uh, there are reports which suggest Chidambaram is having some 23 or 24 uh, uh, bail against him. And, he is, uh, and his son is having... And open and shut case like Maran's, you know, where uh, these uh, cables have been misused and uh, which have been put into. And that case also uh, has not seen the light of the day. I agree with you. And that's why the action now of this raid and other thing, very sorry to tell, doesn't carry much credibility. The perception is so these are, you know, sort of done. That's all. And then they go to court and then they get the bail and lower court, then high court and it goes on. And there is no, uh, not a single leader has been put inside jail fully in terms of not, I am not telling about uh, in between some days in jail and then they came out and I agree with you. Next one. Vignesh wants to know, even if BJP makes it in the center and breaches Tamil Nadu, what difference is it going to make? They haven't taken action against any corrupt people in the last 10 years. He's, he's echoing what you said. Yeah. From the point of view of corruption, I totally agree with you, Arthi. But if it breaches uh, TN, I am looking at it from another angle in terms of changes in the political culture. Because TN is used to this uh, Dravidian uh, type of uh, culture. And if uh, BJP could uh, make a difference, and that will be a uh, new type of uh, political uh, alignment and culture. And that's what is most important. Because as I told you, they are not opposing the DMK and ADMK only for this poll, only for this uh, election. They are talking much more than that in terms of uh, bringing about a change in the uh, complete uh, Dravidian ideology and Dravidian history and so many other things. Okay. Next one, please. Magnet Ranga wants to know, Happy Yugadi, lot of suspense on what Modiji plans for NDA 3.0. In your opinion, what could be Modiji's plans? It all depends uh, how much, if he is going to get uh, if BJP alone about 300 and he forms a government, I am sure it would be consolidating some of these uh, uh, current activities and more important is I think uh, this uh, action against uh, black money and uh, tax havens may get intensified. This is what is my understanding. This is what is my idea. And uh, last but not least is the uh, 
self reliance in terms of our defense exports have significantly gone up that is one area and uh, very many other areas are waiting to be uh, improved or increased and uh, his focus will be phenomenally on building massive infrastructure in the country if uh, ir would uh, remember uh, eisenhower when he took over and then there was a lot of discussion and he started this whole idea of this uh, what we call national highways what they call the freeways is uh, you know linking uh, one corner of the country to another corner and all over the places and that revolutionized the entire uh, us uh, economy coupled with the automobile revolution you know these two went hand in hand and the change into the whole complexion of the country actually for instance you can get into a, those days it was a very major thing actually you can get into a car at uh, california and end up on this side of the uh, thing in new york over a period of time not uh, and that also had a significant impact on improving the efficiency of the railways anyhow eisenhower is credited with uh, changing the whole face of the us in terms of the road network so something like that i am sure uh, i would rather prefer it to be linking of our rivers let's wait and see yeah you wanted to uh, say sir rv i want to add a, li- a few few things about uh, dwight eisenhower uh, a colleague of mine uh, was the son of eisenhower's dentist eisenhower was stationed in uh, uk for some time and that's where yeah. he picked up this dentist and that dentist traveled back to us with eisenhower and he wherever eisenhower went the dentist was uh, part of the entourage maybe he had bad teeth or something so my friend used to give me some hilarious stories but the thought that he had to do this interstate came from his experience one time he had to travel from san francisco to washington dc on the road this is sometime in the 30s 1930s took him one month one month he said how the heck can it take one month to go from one corner of the country to the other side so this was a driving thought and then that's when he came up with this grid see us has a very nicely laid out uh, first of all it's a nice rectangle so let's ac- accept that it's a nice rectangle so in a nice rectangle you can have grid easily made grid so all the interstates that's what he created interstates and interstate is a highway where there are no lights absolutely no light so the the traffic starts from one year one end if you have gas you can go all the way to the other end without stopping and this this thing has a very nice formula in the sense every south north is in odd number every uh, east west is an even number even number so yeah just looking at somebody say i came on i90 you know the person came either west or east so it's a very beautifully planned thing and he is absolutely right the interstates not a single interstate has come up in the last 40 50 years uh, professor rv they just you know repairing what has already been there and that's about sometimes they may add a lane or two just to allow for traffic when it goes through a city other than that no new highways have come and yet united states forges on and it's got some of the best networked areas it's it's just amazing india yeah, is going no, somewhere no, i would prefer our pm to look at that from uh, in terms of rivers i would say because that's yes, a very yes the other issue is i would say i have been telling about it for quite long i prepared a background paper also to constitute a second state reorganization commission this whole linguistic uh, you know division is uh, creating more enmity creating more passion it doesn't help also actually with the development of all this artificial intelligence and uh, net and other thing the old idea of language as a andhra pradesh has destroyed that idea that the language is a unifying force <laughs> it it proved that the other way actually it is the one which started this whole movement of linguistic uh, sri ramulu yeah and uh, that's the only thing which got destroyed so i would say uh, reorganization of state is a very very and a country like india can easily have some 45 50 states there is nothing uh, what one can call it shaking about it let's wait and see what are the big ticket items uh, if he right yeah. abhishek ambani oh your surname is very very interesting 
so i should be cautious in <laughs> answering this anyhow just joking that's our democracy sir any purpose is flawed and give preference to the law breakers i what as it is always told it is one of the best among the worst options so that's the only answer one can give nothing more or nothing less this is what there is a you are asking will he be able to win significant amount in 2024 election anomaly it's a, you know there is always a uh, this is a wish or a hope and uh, what actually will happen i am more interested in uh, will he be able to get something like 12 to 15% of the vote share if we could get that that itself will be an electrifying thing and he should definitely uh, win his own seat if he doesn't win his seat then that will be a major disaster for the entire uh, you know what one can call the safran movement in tamil nadu i would say so he should at least uh, win his seat yeah madurai yeah. not sure uh, what is the possibility of madurai seat again you know uh, i shouldn't uh, brag <laughs> he, he is a very 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 good friend of mine and a student anyhow uh, he should win in the normal you know logic basis and other thing i mean the road show another thing you know i don't give so much amount of importance or credit because uh, you know in a crowded place like pandi bazar in tinagar you will anyhow get a huge amount of crowd <laughs> just food traffic is high <laughs> huh just so, food traffic okay. itself is high madurai you know that's not important but uh, let's wait and see how does uh, madurai respond to uh, srinivasan okay next one please nikhil meria wants to know professor rv sir your two cents on the bengaluru blast case progress that's a very good progress i would say definitely they have been able to identify and uh, i would say by and large they have cracked the whole case by arresting all the suspects and it's a very painstaking type of a job but uh, they have done a good job i would say and obviously the coordination between uh, bengal police karnataka police and other thing is required to be recognized there is no point in uh, you know complaining about it or something it's a reasonably a very good uh, progress let's wait and see the hopefully the court will punish them yeah thank you vn sagra for becoming a youtube member neeraj bv wants to know professor any view about shimoga lsc as ishwarappa rebel bjp candidate no he is a rebel candidate but he is as i always say he is a rebel without a pause so there is no he is not going to uh, win or anything and i don't think he will be able to spoil the chances of uh, bjp candidate significantly or anything he is just you know he is uh, telling that uh, modi should become pm but i am not going to accept it it's like you know this type of thing is not going to be very helpful very sad state of affairs because he was one of the very earliest members along with uh, our uh, previous uh, chief minister who worked hard for yediyurappa uh, yediyurappa hmm. uh, both of them are very friendly also uh, though belonging to different uh, caste but uh, somehow you know iswarappa was always a uh, dissident i don't think he will have significant impact next one please ganesh ram pm uh, nice to see our respected professor rv back to p gurus uh, dr uh, dr pm namaskaram thank ganesh you very much thanks a lot thank you ganesh ram facts and fiction uh, ask vr uh, i don't know what vr is does the dmk have been helped to defeat anomaly because of recent activities that make sense how could they malpractice in the election what are the thangamani velumani factors in kovai thangamani and velumani are extremely popular and well known let's not try to uh, more of uh, velumani actually let's not try to be little and that's one reason i personally feel finally dmk may decide to support uh, admk candidate in coimbatore uh, and want admk to uh, support the 
Maran in central uh, Chennai. Let's wait and see. And uh, so they are hell bent on defeating Anamalai for the simple reason if Anamalai is defeated in Coimbatore, then the entire saffron surge in the uh, Tamil Nadu belt will be significantly attacked and uh, reversed. It's uh, so they if they defeat Anamalai, they have proved the point that. Uh, uh, lotus can never bloom in the soil of uh, EVR, according to their logic. So that's a uh, major thing for them. And that's why all the activities are uh, surrounding this, uh, you know, this uh, single point agenda of defeating Anamalai. Okay. Professor Arvi, one small uh, observation. A survey that came out today is putting DMK in second position, sir, not ADMK. No, no, that's right. But uh, if they have to give it, uh, you know, what one can call uh, quid pro quo, then uh, they have to give it to ADMK and then uh, uh, get Maran uh, got into center. That's, uh, let's wait and see. And some of these, uh, you know, I'm not uh, cynical, but I am skeptical of some of these surveys again. Not that I am questioning their uh, integrity or anything. But, uh, you know, the sample size and the type of people, you know, people also have this, uh, take the mic and ask whom they are asking is very important. If they ask uh, some well-known suffering supporter, who will win? He will obviously say Anamale will win. So that's not, uh, in the sense, you know, many of these are to be taken with a uh, pinch of salt or a ton Next of salt. One, <laughs> okay. Next one, please. Right. Uh, Anshuman, Anshuman Singh wants to know, why is BJP giving 16 seats to JDU in today's condition? There is a huge anti-incumbency against Neetish and pro with Modi. BJP might win all seats and JDU not so sure of even 50%. 100% I am agreeing with you. Is it just, you know, uh, because uh, Neetish has come to this side and he is again and again telling i am not going to go back again <laughs> i will be here only. until he goes back <laughs> until he goes huh? back <laughs> until uh, he goes back <laughs> until he goes back so anyhow uh, this is uh, i do not know what are the compulsions of the local party or the uh, national level party and uh, these are you know uh, something which uh, much much later only you come to know i agree with you next one please Sri Vidya Ramamurthy wants to know, the press of Tamil Nadu seems to be asking tough questions to Annamala. Is there any one honest channel there? Sorry, almost all the press is pro-DMK in Tamil Nadu. If you are watching or if you observe over a long period of time, this is from the 60s actually. Some are 100% pro-DMK, some are some sort of 95% pro-DMK and you know, almost all of them are Except, you know, one Dinaka uh, Dinak Malar newspaper or something here and there. Otherwise, there are no independent and, uh, you know, a lot of advertisement comes from the DMK side only. That is one thing. Sometimes it could be threat. Sometimes also the employees, the reporters, many of them are of Dravidian orientation. That is something very important. Yeah, somebody told... Uh, uh, the Hindu, the editor, if you change the editor, nothing will change. The entire thing, including the fellow who cleans the turbul in the canteen, are all in Hindu from um, either D uh, communist background or uh, DKDMK background. So it's not very easy for a uh, press type of an organization having this uh, level of uh, committed people working there. So you may change the ownership. It takes a lot of time and effort for it to seep to the ground and which is not happening in Tamil Nadu. Sorry. Next one, please. Farooq Gulsara, thank you so much for your super sticker. Srikant Iyer wants to know, Sri Iyer sir, when can we expect to see Sri Ram Seshadri on P Guru's next? Most likely on Sunday. He's traveling. He's actually helping Annamalai in Coimbatore. Uh, this is not easy. Well, wh what professor is saying, many are also cognizant of complacency and people are not stopping. In fact, uh, I also spoke with Karthik Gopinath, my good friend. He had just returned from Kowei after about one week there. 
very very hot and you have other obligations also kartik is also part of the it cell of uh, bjp tn and uh, so the, the lot of people are putting in very very high effort they realize the stake that's why yesterday i put out one uh, 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 i had put out one shorts one minute long why coimbatore is battle royal and uh, uh, sir with your permission i can play that if i can find it sure uh, Uh, sir let's say you take the next question i'll i'll find the file sir go ahead sir yeah next question why fellows are not being put behind bar i agree with you they he should have been put behind bar long long time before i think uh, there is uh, some amount of complacency benign neglect or whatever you call it is uh, taking place so gopikrishna is writing about it the 2g quite a number of years before itself a follow up should have been done when uh, he and the kanimuri were uh, given the pardon but it has taken such a long period of time and so the credibility of the government is uh, very low the perception is that you know the, there is no real fight against uh, corruption if that is the perception that's going to be a very difficult thing like uh, I agree with you. Wait, 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 wait. I am ready with the video. Can we play the video, please? Sure. Come a battle royale in 2021 in the assembly elections. The ADMK swept the Congo belt complete. Ten out of ten, they got it. And this was to try and show that EPS had full control of in the Congo belt region. After that, the municipal elections came. and it is believed that dmk spent close to 17500 rupees per voter in order to wrest control of the kovai municipal corporation they just wanted to prove a point that they can and will win in coimbatore who made that happen sendil balaji the man who is cooling his heels in prison right now well the same way now it is possible that anna malay has said okay i'll stand in the same constituency not pay a single paisa and win and i'll prove it to you that it is always the nationalism that flows freely through the veins of coimbatore next question please yeah this is good <laughs> but uh, let's wait and see <laughs> cash versus nationalism very nice yes 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 uh, venkatesh wants to know with all the technology available for authentication why are nri is not able to vote from overseas even today i i am given to understand that uh, the election commission has constituted a sub group which is uh, working with uh, technology people it should be possible may not be this election maybe for the uh, future elections it should be possible and are is to vote thank you srinivas um, if bjp does well in these elections will we see many senior leaders from admk moving to bjp quite possible it could happen it could happen based on the perception that what you are suggesting is if admk become the third party in a sense and uh, then uh, you know everybody would uh, uh, like to keep uh, their options open but the bjp will face a massive what we know winners curse problem again that we can see okay thank you so much professor rv it was a wonderful session and uh, viewers please like share and subscribe to our channel don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications i'm hoping to get professor rv back next week again let's wait and see how that goes thank you so much sir namaskar now i think it is uh, broadcast is stopped or no not yet.